international partners actually becoming integrating in how they uh, operate um, through through GRISP as a, as a kind of entry point. Um, and I think there is a, a real case there for developing a slide that relates, say, even specifically to the Indian one, uh, because that has been well developed over the last two years. It's, but I just thought that's a way of expanding out the different yeah. partnerships. Yeah. We are actually. Um that, that would really take a, a, a completely um, a, a second seminar. We are really developing thoughts. How can we really scale up this and move beyond really the, the three founding centers and make it really much more a global partnership than just a CGIR research program. So we have are we starting to trash out ideas and we're talking with different uh, national partners to find mechanisms that they can actually be part of CRISP, say, hey, we contribute to CRISP, we also align part of our, our ND structure, and we benefit from being part of a global alliance, a global partnership. So yes, we are developing these thoughts. We are very much um, engaged with uh, mechanisms like CORA, the National Expert Committee in, um, in Africa, the, the, the FLAP um, Consortium in, uh, in Latin America. And we really want to, to make it much broader partnership than just the CRP. So thanks for that uh, intervention. What's the uh, current view of GRIS in the consortium secretariat these days? And what's your crystal ball thoughts about what GRIS might be like in the future? And uh, what are the main threats that we might be facing? Okay. Um, I think that we do best to hold our own course really develop a very strong CRISP tool, which has expanded membership, offers expanded opportunities for partners to engage and actually be part of CRISP, and put a very strong R&D agenda that is rooted into or contributes to the, the, the um, st uh, strategies of our partners and to the wishes of the donors that will be reflected in the new strategy and results framework. How do others look at Chris? That's a very mixed world. Um, we have traditional friends, such as USAID, such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, there are more, who strongly believe that investment in commodities, and then specifically a commodity like rice, that is the biggest um, um, food commodity of feeding people in the world is really a very worthwhile investment. There are also donors who consider investment in commodities so passé that you shouldn't even be talking about it anymore. Um, alternative models that say, well, we need to do systems research and agroecological, holistic approaches, all sound very good, um, but haven't resulted into um, very successful impact so far. Actually, the so-called system CRPs um, that we have in our collection, humid tropics, dryland systems, waterland ecosystems, um, have not produced those results that many of these donors had hoped for. Um, so I'm, um, I, um, um, what I see is that Chris is still held up as an example. Um, we are leading the pack in many areas, um, some of them uh, that have showed in m and &E, and our impact and outcome orientation is, uh, is held up as a model. A strong R&D um, is held up as a model. The whole way we are organized is, is, um, is held up as a model. Um, so I, in looking at my crystal ball, I definitely see Chris continuing. Um, looking really long term into donor and funding landscapes, and anything can happen. But I'm very, I'm very optimistic about, uh, about Chris too. Okay, this is the last question. Thank you 
so much, sir, for, uh, for sharing your food experience throughout the world. I am from Myanmar. And my question is the, your opinion that uh, which activity is the most impact for the livelihood of the small uh, household farmers by unit use of money? Because I'm working for LIF, uh, so LIF is uh, demanding for us the what are, what are uh, many for activities, the units use of many, the most high activity for that. So may I ask you which kind of activities will be the most impact for unit use of water, uh, unit use of many? Of money? Yes, many. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the best person to answer that for Myanmar. I've only visited the country twice, and there are, uh, among yourself and others, I see uh, more Myanmarese people here, and we have Brown David, others who spent a lot of time there, who can um, answer that question much, much better than I can do. Um, having said that, in general, um, in a country where Agricultural production, and especially smallholder farming, is still the major occupation of the population. Investments in agriculture, time and time and time again, have proven to be a major driving force for economic development and getting lifted out of poverty. So, really, investments on the ground in agriculture related to um, a, a, a training, education, research, but also infrastructure investment. Um, Myanmar definitely needs, if, if, the, if, if rice production gets up because of the work such as Lyft and others, it does need good roads, it does need ports to ship the rice to the, uh, to the export destinations it aims to reach. Um, so there is um, a lot of good reason to keep investing in agriculture, in the agricultural sector. How best to do that, I'm really not equipped to answer. Um, but if others want to, to, um, to try to give that a shot. Uh, may I ask one more? That is there any plan that to integrate with the findings from the farmer feeds, that's the best bell technology with the mapping, mapping one? Uh, um, yes. Well, to me that relates basically to this graph. So we have a lot of activities in, in the LIF and the ACR project on the Philip side, right? And if that is successful, we need to be able to scale out. And that's where these technologies such as mapping come in. As yes. you know, these are target environments where particular technologies will be expected to do well and have certain impacts. Is there already an example can you share us? <laughs> I think maybe it's better if we continue one on one over a coffee break. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, the last one in here. Quick one, please. Do we have examples of products that can be scaled out globally? Yes, I mean, sub one is, is one product that immediately comes to my attention. It, it's a gene that can be incorporated in many other varieties, and um, IRI does not always need to be involved anymore. Another example are these, the, the maps and the technologies behind producing the maps that I showed that Andy Nelson is making. Have we done it? Yes. Again, I think there are examples. The question, um, can we do more? And I think the answer again is yes, we can always do more. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Bas, for this presentation. And we want to